Hi guys, welcome to lesson 13, voltage and resistance. So we will, so the goal of today, I can't believe we're only up to lesson 13. The goal of today is we will be able to describe voltage and resistance and Ohm's law. Now we haven't talked about voltage and resistance, we've spent the past two lessons talking about current. First we talked about charge, we talked about how we can generate charge, and then you know how we get that charge from static electricity. We talked about what electricity is, the movement of uh, charge or you know electricity from one place to another. We said why do electrons move? The reason why electrons slash charge moves, if you've forgotten, is it wants to get to the pot. The negative or when it always want to get to the positive. So I, I almost like to sometimes do this. So if we know that the electrons want to get to the positive. If we put like a little, you know, wall here, then they will jump over the wall to get to that positive charge. If that wall is, say, a, um, if that wall is a light bulb, then that means that the electrons will try, will go through this light bulb and generate light just to get to the positive. And that's how we use electricity to our advantage. The um, the greater the negative charge or the greater the positive charge, the more energy that those particles will have because they will really, really want to get away from that negative. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. We talked about current, how it's measured in, um, how it's measured in coulombs or charge is measured in coulombs, and current is a measure of charge per a second. If you have a lot of current, if you have a lot of electrons going in a particular time, then you call that a high current. You can have a low current by just having just one or two electrons or one or two charge carriers. Um, I talked about the example. There's no current when there's no switch closed. When the switch is closed, there is a current when the switch is open because then you've got a flow of electrons, a flow of charge. We talked about um, how the electrons move down a wire. They don't actually move very much, but the charge does move very quickly. Then we talked about conventional versus electron flow. So voltage and resistance is a new idea. Voltage is linked to the amount of energy the electrons have. And it's measured in volts and has the symbol V. Finally, one that makes sense compared to current, which is measured in I and amps, uh, has a simple I and measured in amps. It was obviously popularized by Alexander Volta, who essentially came up with this term voltage. Now, the idea that I usually use to describe this is this if I have a uh, PowerPoint, and I have someone standing near that PowerPoint. Electricity doesn't jump out of the PowerPoint from a meter away. Even if you're touching the PowerPoint, you're not going to get electrocuted. And so you might want to ask yourself this for a second. If, elect if a electrical circuit has so much voltage, so much power, then why aren't we just seeing lightning coming out of the PowerPoints? The reason that we don't see lightning coming out of the PowerPoints, unless you have really got a broken, um, unless you've got a really broken system, oh, I'm lagging. Now, oh, yeah, it's a bit laggy. Um, don't stress, just hang in there. Um, the reason why the, elect the electricity doesn't jump out like lightning from a PowerPoint is it doesn't have enough energy. In order to in order to move from one place to another place, electrons need to have enough energy to jump. And if it's trying to jump through something like air, it's going to be very, very hard because air is an insulator. In order to jump through the air, it needs to rip the electrons away from the protons in the air just to conduct it. So you need to have a lot of energy. In the 
in the picture here, I've got like, I've got a uh, electricity jumping from one side to the other side. That's going to require a large amount of, um, that's going to require a large amount of energy to jump across here. So those electrons have got a lot of energy. You could think about this in another way. I'm actually getting a bit better at teaching this because I'm teaching year 11 physics. But you could think about this, right? You have to make those electrons want to repel each other so much that they're willing to jump to the other side. Because that's the thing is like, if you have one extra electron, it wouldn't care. It's like, whatever. But you have so many electrons, they want to jump. That's what voltage is. It's the amount of energy that you're giving them. How do you give uh, charge? How do you give something more energy? You make it more charge you make it you add more positives over here or there's another way i want you guys to sort of think about the charge almost how you might think about gravity okay, if i've got this apple on the right here it's on the ground if i lift that apple up say about eight centimeters or eight meters or whatever i've given it energy i've given it potential energy now the word potential means that it has you know it can do something it can fall it has the energy to fall the higher i move the apple up the more energy it will get and the reason why it has this energy is because if I let this apple go, it would fall down and would hit the ground. The higher I lift it up, the faster, you know, with more energy it hit the ground. If I drop it from one centimeter, it might land perfectly well. If I drop it from like 10 meters, the apple would be smooshed. You know, it's just not going to be able to survive that higher drop. So um, the question sort of also that's important is um, where does the energy come from? The energy comes from me lifting the apple up. I give it energy by pushing against the gravitational field. Gravity wants to pull it down. I'm working against gravity and that energy goes into the apple. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to now <laughs> for a second. Marco, do you know what he just sent me? <laughs> Guys. Oh, you um, make hello. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, what if I took that over here? I've got a bunch of electrons and a bunch of protons. If I move those electrons away from the protons, what I end up with is I end up with a extra excess of I create potential energy it took an effort for me to pull those electrons away from the protons remember electrons are attracted to protons I have to put in energy to pull them apart and the same way I have to put in energy to move the apple up to the top so then that means that if I let the apple go, it'll fall down to the ground. If I let the electrons go, then they will move towards the positive. The more, uh, the further away I move them, the greater the attraction. The more electrons that I put in here, the more than they'll, they'll want to fall down to the ground. That potential energy, moving an apple, in the air against the force of gravity gives it potential energy moving electrons away from protons against the electrostatic force gives them potential energy we call this potential energy voltage the electrostatic force by the way i don't think i've talked about it is the attraction between the negative electrons and the positive protons let's keep going so that means um, that means what is the what is the energy here? 
the energy is in the battery. This water wants to flow down to the ground, very much like the apple. It wants to get to the, to the ground. So how it gets to the ground is it wants to flow. So can I ask this question? Is there a pressure? Is this water going to push against the tap to try to get to the ground? Yes or no? You can say it out loud or you can write it in chat, either or. Is there a push? Does the water want to push? He does. Yeah. Oh, we can still hear so us. do you still hear us? Yeah, I can still hear you. Oh, what's that? Damn. I, we'll back to <laughs> I thought he was gone, God. So the water is pushing against the tap because the water really wants to get to the ground. So even if the tap is off, there is still a voltage. There is still a push to get to the ground. So it's kind of interesting. When we said with the current, we said if the tap's closed, there's no current. But if the tap's closed, there is still a voltage. There is still a push to get to the ground. Because those electrons really want to get to the ground. But if I then open the tap, there is still a voltage because now it is pushing. It's pushing the water out. This might give you guys an idea as well about why there is a current in the first place. The reason there is a current in the first place is because the voltage is pushing the water. It's pushing the electrons through the system to get out. That's what I think about. Whenever I think about voltage, I think about the push of electrons. Let's talk about voltage in a circuit. Is there a push when the circuit's closed? Yes, there is a push when the circuit's closed. All these electrons that are sitting around here, they don't want to be here. The battery keeps forcing more and more and more and more electrons over to this side of the battery. It's like trying to take, it's like you're at a club and you just split the room in half and you're pushing all the guys onto one side. And the guys are like, dude, this is like a sausage fest. I want to dance with the hot ladies, but you know, too bad. All the guys are going to gather here. Do they want to be there? No, they don't want to be there. They want to be mingling with all the hot positive guys. You know that charges. feeling too well, sir. Yeah, this analogy is going a bit weird, um, but that's fine. It is. Even and then, of course, once you switch it on, yeah, now these electrons can get around to the to those sweet positives. So they can go around and you know get away from. The, all the other negatives because they don't want to be near negatives they're repelled by it so there is still a push even when there is um, when we connect the circuit up so again there is a push when we connect the circuit up same way open the tap is there is a push turn the circuit on there is a push through the circuit so i'm going to wait here for one second what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly open up chat can i get you Okay, one to five. I want to know how well you understood that. Five means I can now teach voltage to pretty much anyone I, you know, could probably explain it to another year 10 student. Zero means I have no idea what happened. What, I don't even know how to spell voltage. One means you sort of get it a little bit. Four means you get it but couldn't explain it to someone. Two means yeah, you three means you might need some help, and two means you'll probably need uh, maybe help from friends, maybe, but two means you'll need some help from me, probably. Can you give me a, a number in chat just to tell me how well you understood that? How well that did that make sense to you? Um, could you explain voltage to someone else? Negative 12, okay. So Min's very confused. Emre sort of got it. Um, Angus has sort of got it. Um, I'll look for one more. Uh, keep going, guys. Um, three, four, three, bow. Yeah. John's pretty got it. He's got about three. Reese's got it. 
Good. Uh, I'm going to keep moving on then. So the third and final thing we need to talk about when we talk about circuits, we've talked about voltage, we've talked about current. The last one is to talk about resistance. Now resistance, when we talk about resistance, um, you lost them when we started to talk about the analogy. Really, you understood, you, sorry, someone said that you, uh, I think that's saying you, you understood better the charge thing. Okay, fine. Yeah, you need to put it in like, bet, like, like less smart words because your words are too smart, mister. Okay, all right. Less um, smart words. <laughs> no, Leave me alone. Right. <laughs> it wasn't the word, using hard words. I use the word brain, right? Uh, I can definitely see why that, that that's that <laughs> I have never talked about potential energy in any of the other lessons. So it makes sense that it doesn't, that it wouldn't make 100% sense. I guess, I guess you what know I'm this. trying to say is that electrons are like, app, if you pick an electron up, if you pick an apple up, you give it energy, you drop it, it releases the energy. You move an electron away from a positive, you give it energy, you let it go, it'll move to the positive and release energy. The whole idea of a circuit is to try to use that energy. And how high or how far away we move those electrons, the amount of energy it has before it moves towards the positives, that's what the voltage is. So I've tried to use, I tried not to use, um, yeah, certain, I tried not to use big words there. Let's talk about resistance. Resistance is the last of our three things. Resistance is a measure of the oppositions to an electron flow. Uh, it is measured in ohms and it has a symbol R. Let's talk about what this means in a bit simple terms. Ultimately, what that means is electrons want to move from the negative to the positive. Great. But if you instead, you know, put like a bunch of obstacles, you know, um, that the electron has to go through to get from the negative to the positive, then what you're doing is you're making it harder for the electron to get to the end. You're making it more, you're adding more opposition to the electrons. The electrons now can't move as easily. So there is an easy route and there is a hard route. And the hard route's because it's got all this crap in the way. So we refer to this resistance, we refer to this as resistance. The inability for it to move around is called, is a resistance to being able to move. It has the symbol um, ohms. So we use ohms to mean how hard it is. Um, there's a bad pun here. Um, I'll, le I'll leave it there. See if some of you are I've never used this bad pun to pick up women before. I don't think it would work. But yeah, um, George um, George Ohm was the one that came up with this idea about using the resistance. By the way, this symbol here is omega it's just you just draw it by draw pretty much on two lines and doing like a zip sort of thing here it's a greek letter um but yeah resistance is the last thing it's how hard it is to move through something the example that i normally give for this is imagine your and the example that i usually use is imagine you've got the s block corridor right and let's just say you're trying to get to your locker you know, and you're trying to get to your locker and, you know, it's pretty easy to do that when there's no one, it's pretty easy to get to your locker when there's no one else in the corridor. But if you start filling that corridor up with a bunch of students because the bell just went, it's going to be harder for you to move through the corridor to get to your locker because there is more resistance. There are more people you have to push past. What does this look like? Again, same idea. Okay, we've got this um, flow. 
this nice easy flow of the electron bye bye i back you um we've got this nice easy flow um okay yep sure um we've got this nice easy flow for the electrons if i was then to say maybe drop i don't know let's just say i dropped a rock into the um into the tank okay so let's what would happen if a rock got lodged in the pipe let's take a rock and you just you know put that rock in the pipe okay now that rock is going to get in the way of the water the flow will go down it won't be as strong as it was before because now if you think about it now there's a rock in the way all of the water has to push past that rock to get past not as much water can push past the rock as it could before it's harder for it to push past it so therefore not as much water comes out okay we're not getting as big a current so let's now talk about this compared to resistance in a circuit at the moment this circuit's fine the electrons are coming out of the negative side they're going through the circuit back to the positive easy but if i make it harder for the electrons to move if i make it you know if i add some resistance some hurdles to make it more difficult for the electrons to move then what might happen if i add a resistor so here's a resistor going in suddenly i've added a hurdle for these electrons to go through you know the electrons have to climb over this mountain just to get to the positive side and that's going to require some energy it's going to reduce the current and it's going to make the bulb more dim i should also point out at this point is the light bulb itself is also a resistor it's resisting the current it's sort of saying i'm going to get in the way the only reason why the electrons push through the light bulb is because they want to get to the positive so they will overcome the resistance you can get a resistance that's so high that essentially the um battery won't be able to conduct electricity and that's exactly the example that we had before with the person and the electricity uh, the power point the only reason why electricity isn't jumping out into that person's hand is right. the air is a really high has a lot of resistance it just can't move through it because it's such a high resistance it would lose all its energy in fact but you could get enough voltage that you could get electricity to jump out of the power point you just need to crank up the voltage so that pretty much our oh, levels of resistance okay so something with a high resistance is um to electron flow is called an insulator wood air plastic anything that's um uh anything that's got um anything that makes is like essentially is, is stops electrons from moving easily can i get someone else to shout out either in chat or out loud can you guys give me another example of something that might be an insulator that doesn't conduct electricity well uh wool wool perfect foam right. anything else leather tissue yep. foam leather love it what about um and then yeah okay and then good conductors yep paper is a pretty good one too I like that good oh, conductors. yeah john and i are on the same page all right whereas a material with low resistance which means electrons can flow through it really easily 
it doesn't make an opposition. It's actually easy for them to flow. So an insulator would look like, you know, it's really hard for the electrons to move through them. Whereas um, a conductor, it's just, you know, really easy for it to move. Copper, gold, water, these are all good conductors. I don't suppose any of you guys know any other ones because that's a bit harder to name conductors, but pretty much, can you guys give me another conductor? Let me see if I can open up the chat. Um, give me a conductor, someone, other than copper, gold, and water. John, no one's being your conductor. You resist that. No relationship with girls. Oh. No, no, that's an insulate. No. No, he doesn't conduct. <laughs> hey, everybody, everybody's saying that he's not frozen. Oh. Okay. Um, Pikachu. Move back. Metal. Perfect. Thanks, Jess. Metal would be. But do you not hear mine? I can't hear. I can hear some people. I heard someone say I can't hear mine. Metal will work. Anything metal, iron. Pikachu, sir. What was that, Angus? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, if you if you cut if it's cutting out a bit, don't worry. I will upload this to YouTube later. So if you're missing out, copper and zinc. Zinc's another good one too. So anything that can conduct electricity. Um, anything that be, is usually shiny will be a good conductor. Water is an interesting one. Water, salty water will conduct electricity really well. Um, but yeah, so that's the different levels. Wait, Mister, why salty? Can't it be fresh water? Why does it have to be salt water? Okay, so we have an issue here. If you have, and this is actually something interesting, because I get sometimes with this. If you have pure uh, water, pure water with yep. no ions in it. It actually is a insulator. like from the tap, sir. Hmm? Like from the tap? No, not from the tap. Yeah, pure, <laughs> chemically pure water, right? It will be an insulator. Water from the tap has fluorine in it. We know that because it keeps our teeth, you know, without rotting out of our head. It also has a bunch of like iron particles in it as well. So it's a good conductor. But if you have pure water with no ions in it, it's actually an insulator. Does that mean that it won't conduct electricity? Yeah, it won't conduct electricity. But if you put your hand in there, all the salt on this, your surface of your skin will move into the water, turn into salt water, it'll conduct electricity and electrocute you. So when, when we say water, I usually say water is a conductor because yeah, water will usually conduct electricity. If you spill water on the ground, you will likely get electrocuted from it. But if you had somehow chemically pure water, then it would actually be an insulator. But I don't usually talk about that because I don't want to confuse people too much. Does that make sense though? Yeah. Cool. Um, this sort of summarizes everything though. Uh, again, it's another analogy, so I was saying, but it sort of talks about the different things. You should be thinking about electric circuits. Current is the substance that is flowing through the circuit. Remember, it's got a you nerve know, flowing through the circuit. Just like how in a river, the current is like the water molecules flowing down the river. You can have a very thin stream, or you can have a very big thick stream but ultimately the more water molecules going down the river the higher the current is voltage is a force that pushes the current in this picture it would be the gravity in this case the water which is remember those electrons are getting pushed by this water pole it's forcing the electrons the waterfall is ultimately what's going to keep that river flowing. That's what voltage does. It pushes the electrons through a circuit and keeps those electrons moving. 
The last idea here is resistance. Resistance is the friction that impedes the flow of current. It slows the current down, makes it harder for the current to move. And that means that these rocks in, the, in this example here are what is actually slowing the river down. The more rocks you have, the slower the river will move. Those three things together make up our understanding of the circuit. How much electricity is flowing, how much energy that electricity has, and what is slowing that electricity down. And we can actually combine those three ideas. Those three ideas combine to make one formula. The formula, and this is the really the most important formula, it's called Ohm's law. And it's V equals IR, where the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. So, And it's just a formula that you can use to get the um, to get the actual values here. But I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what this formula means, because normally what I would do is I teach this in a single period, but I quickly want to talk to you guys about what this formula means. I'm going to talk about it up the top here. So the amount of I think the best we can rearrange this formula as well. So V equals IR can also be arranged into V divided by R equals I, or you can make it the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. There are three ways. If you're not very good at rearranging formulas, then you should probably write these down on a cheat sheet somewhere. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to talk about this one for a second. I want to talk about the example here. Let's say we've got two situations. If I have a situation where I have a really high voltage and a really low resistance. What is that going to mean for the current? Well, let's talk about this. If I have a really high voltage, that's like saying I've got lots of energy. Imagine you've got someone that's really excited. You know, they really want to move. They really have a lot of energy. They can push past anyone. And resistance, if you're a low resistance, it means there are not many obstacles. What that means is if I've got, imagine an example, let's go back to our S3 example or you know, S block corridor. Let's just say that you are really, really hungry. You want to get to your locker and there's no one in the, in the locker bay to get in your way. You're going to move really quickly. In fact, and we know that if you can move really quickly, then that means you've got a high current. Okay, so the more energy you have, if you have a high amount of energy and a low amount of resistance, then you're going to have a high current. If the opposite is true, if you have barely any energy, let's just say it's period six, you're really tired, you just can't be bothered pushing past people, right? Let's just say you've had low energy. Let's just say those electrons barely want to move and you've got high resistance. There is a lot of people in the locker bay. They're not moving out of your way. That's going to mean that you're going to move slowly, which is a low current. Now, if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I really don't like these analogies, fine. You can think about it like this. If you have... That was the last one, sir. Hmm? 
that analogy was better than the last one. Okay, cool. Let's just Wait, say what's that name? if you don't like to use the number, if you don't like this, then use numbers. If you have a really high, if you have a really high voltage, 100 volts, and you have a very low resistance, one ohm, then you're going to have a really high current, 100 amps. That's this example at the top, this one and this one. But if you've got a really low, if you've got a really low voltage, maybe say one volt, and you've got a really high resistance, like 100 ohms, then you're going to have a really small current. It's, there's not going to be very many electrons that are going to move. And if they do, they move very, very slowly. So Ohm's law is a way that you can link all of these ideas together. And I'm, yeah, if, there is, if it's really difficult for the electrons to move and they haven't got much energy, they're going to move really, really slowly. But if they've got shit tons of energy and there's nothing in their way, they're going to stream straight through that. You could even, you can look at this another way as well. We could look at it using this formula here. You could say, well, listen, if you've got lots of current and you have lots of resistance, well, you want to get a large flow. You want to get lots of people moving through the corridor. Even though the corridor is full of people, then that means you're going to need lots of energy you're going to need a high voltage if you want to get lots of people moving and there's not much resistance you won't need as high a voltage all of these are linked okay now i love this formula is a good way to say have these links but ultimately i know most of you guys are just going to rely on probably the you know using the formula so what i'm going to do on wednesday is i'm actually going to be giving you guys access to electronics one now I'm going to make electronics one due um, not on Thursday, but the next week, week three. But I want you guys to sort of get familiar with some of these questions so that we can um, work towards it. The last thing I'll do before the end of the lesson is I've got this. Um, um, a torch uses a nine volt battery and has 100 milliamps of current through the circuit. Uh, through the circuit when the torch is on. How much resistance is in the lamp of the torch? How do you calculate a problem like this? V equals I R. But I don't want to calculate voltage. I want to calculate the resistance. So that means I'm going to have to rearrange this formula. V divided by I is going to equal R. I just move this I to the other side. Once I've done that, I can substitute things in. I've got nine volts and I have a hundred milliamps, but 100 milliamps is the same as 0 0.1 amps. If you don't know how to go from milliamps to amps, you need to divide by a thousand. So that means I'm going to have 0 0.1 amps. If I put that in, I've got 90 ohms. That's the symbol for ohms. So you're going to have to be careful when you do these types of questions to check that the charge is correct, to check that you're using the right. Um, you've manipulated the formula and then to check that you've actually um after you've manipulated the formula you want to then substitute it in making sure that you are using the right amps or milliamps we're going to do some practice on this um tomorrow and probably start looking at the next topic on thursday but i think that's all i'm going to leave you guys with what i'm going to do is I'm going to...